Hey, David here. There's a lot going on in our world as usual, but in light of yesterday's events, I, like many of you, had all kinds of emotions that were running around in my mind. There was dismay, discouragement, distress. Right? I, I know some are fearful, frustrated. Some are flat out angry. It seems that the world around us continues to get angrier and angrier. And yes, I know it's been going on for years, but man, the last several years seem to have gone to a whole new level. Evidenced by the last couple of months, and of course, yesterday. We're concerned now, for now, of course, but also for our kids and grandkids. We're concerned what kind of world are we leaving them? So I want to ask you to spend some time to pray. I also want to remind us as Christ followers and as a church that our response is critical. James, the brother of Jesus, he has some good words. He says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. If we would put this into practice, especially now, in these uncivil times, what a difference that could make. Remember the words that our country is founded on, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal? Hey, our founders did not make this up out of thin air. This comes from God. In Genesis 1, we read that everyone is made in the image of God. So let's treat everyone the same way. As followers of Jesus, we also know that loving one another is one of our highest commands. In fact, Jesus said, by this, all people will know that you are my followers. You love one another. And I get it. It's not always easy. It's not comfortable. It's not convenient. But nonetheless, we're called to love anyway. And we can talk and vigorously debate. We can even disagree but we're still called to love unconditionally. So there are going to be times when we find ourselves at a crossroad. There's going to be contempt or grace. And make no mistake, this is one of those times. And I know it's much easier to be divided. It's easier to speak with sarcasm and contempt. It just is. It takes a lot more effort, a lot of energy, a lot more soul searching to say united. And what's really amazing to me is Jesus, when he's in John 17, he saw the division is coming. And so in John 17, Jesus has a prayer and Jesus asks something of us and he asks something of his heavenly father. He says in verse 11, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. So Jesus is praying. Now, if these guys can just stay together, then I'm telling you big things can happen. He goes on and says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me. So now he's talking about you and he's talking about me. He's talking to those who turn their life over to Jesus. And this is how the prayer continues. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me, right? Through their message that all of them, that's 100% of them. So what kind of Christ followers? Republicans, Democrats, independents, libertarians, librarians, black, white, brown, Hispanic, poor, wealthy. doesn't matter. It's everyone. He prays that all of them may be one. So Jesus prays for unity. It doesn't come naturally for a variety of reasons. And yet Jesus' prayer requests, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that, so here's the purpose clause. He prays for a very specific reason. He says not to do something for us, but actually to do something through us. So that the world, not just the people in the church, but the world, those outside the church, so that when they see the unity, Despite our diversity, despite our political beliefs, despite our preferences, unity, despite our socioeconomic or cultural or racial backgrounds, he says in the churches, when they see that unity, that's the game changer. Jesus prays the world may believe that you have sent me. So I'm asking you to understand this isn't just a tag, not just an add-on. It's not just a nice to have. Hey, if you think about it, right? No, it's Jesus says this is mission critical. We're one and we're unified. We're unified in Jesus no matter what. So this is our opportunity to pray and to make every effort to nurture unity. In 2 Chronicles 7, it's amazing, verse 14, we've used this a number of times, but he's talking about if my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, if they will pray, if they will seek my face, if they will turn from their wicked ways, then God says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. I'll heal their land. I'm going to ask you to pray, and here's several things I want us to pray about. I want us to pray, first of all, for peace. Peace in our world, in our country, our state, in our hearts. I want to pray for our response. I'm praying that we'll be civil. We'll 
practice dignity for one another, humility, and unity. And then I'm going to ask us to repent. What's not right in our response? If it's not right, then we need to repent. We're sometimes part of the problem. And then I'm going to ask you to recommit to following God's leading, asking for God's will to be done. Then I'm going to ask that you would pray for healing for our land, revival in our land, in our churches, and in us as well. So would you bow with me and let's pray. Father, we're just shaken in so many different ways because of what has progressed and what has been going on in the world around us, in our own country. And we're just sometimes still in shock about what we've seen. And so God, we're asking for peace. God, peace in our world, peace in our country. God, we're asking that you would give us that peace that passes all understanding. God, we're asking that you would use us as peacemakers as well. And God, we're asking that you would help us as we talk with one another, as we engage with the culture around us, as we engage with our fellow Christ followers. God, that you would help us. Lord, that we would be able to talk, even disagree, but even then we're still loving one another. We're still practicing unity. And God, we're asking for your forgiveness because we know that some of us, all of us, have not said things the right way at times. God, we've had some harsh words for one another. God, we've been part of the problem, so we're asking that you would forgive us. And God, I'm praying for repentance, that we wouldn't just say that we're sorry, but God, that we would change our direction as well. And, and Father, I, I'm just praying for a, a revival. Lord, that you would do some incredible things in us and through us as we continue to seek Jesus, as we continue to practice what Jesus has called us to do, to love one another, to love one another no matter what, just the way that he asks. So God, continue to bring revival, and may it begin with me. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.